I'm going to show you an example application I've built with FBX Designer and loaded onto my 3000 that achieves the same control we had with our action blocks and effects. So if you recall, we had uh, two action blocks, one for our high, high set point, one for our low, low set point, and we had two effects, one that opens the valve when uh, we reach our high, high set point, and one that closes the valve at our low, low set point. Let me show you how I've done that with an FBX Designer application. Uh, so notice if I go up to the top in FBX Connect and go to the Applications tab, I have an application called Tank Control. Let me open up that Tank Control app. And you can see uh, I've got this, new, this custom display that I built for this app. And it's showing me our tank level. Uh, let's enable this app now. It's showing me this tank level. And it's showing me here, what's my high, high set point? What's my low, low set point? And it tells me here if um, I'm in alarm. So see my low, low is in alarm right now until we reach that set point. Now that we passed uh, five, we're no longer in alarm. And uh, so this, what this app does, it allows me to just configure here, where is my level, right? What is my set point? What is my uh, valve, my valve DO object? And then the code you know, uh, does everything for me where it compares the level to the high, high set point, opens the valve, or compares to low, low, closes the valve. And it shows me this nice chart showing my level compared to my high, high, and low, low set points, plus this um, you know, box that's actually filling uh, or uh, going down depending on that. You can see here, here's the value of my status of my valve over here. Uh, so you can imagine that this might be easier to configure and monitor where everything is all on one screen and the logic is baked into the, the program rather than having to manage those two action blocks and two effects, especially if you have multiple tanks with this logic, right? So this application, Tank Control, actually has 10 tanks. So let's say I want to go to Tank 2. And now I want to configure this tank too. Maybe this one is actually my second analog input rather than my first. So I would select set analog 2, 2 selected value. Maybe the tank height here is 50. And this tank height is just to scale these graphics so that you know, the top is represented by the top of this box. Then maybe my high, high set point here is 45. My low is 5. And then I'm using um, my second DO rather than my first. So then I would, I would configure that, enable, click Enable, and now I've configured my second tank, whereas before I would have needed to configure two more action blocks and two more effects, right? Uh, and, and then before I didn't have any graphics, and now I have you know, these pretty graphics. So let's take a look at how this application was actually built. Uh, of course, the code was built in FBX Designer. So I'll show you here. Here is my FBX Designer program. You can see here, I have a main uh, program that has my 10 tank instances. And if I open up uh, one of these tank function blocks, these are custom function blocks. Here's my tank custom function block. The first thing it does at the top is just check if it's enabled, which is um, this enable switch up here. Then it reads in all of the uh, tank uh, parameters. Uh, so what I mean by that is, Within this display, if you actually look at each of these um, you know, values, you see that there's a tag associated with it. This is tank level point, this is tank level, tank height. So if I actually look into this point picker here and uh, scroll down to tank, I, this application has actually added new values to the database. I now have a tank object with 10 uh, parameters that each have, uh, sorry, 10 instances, and each instance has this list of uh, parameters for my values. So within FBX Designer, I'm actually reading that list of values. Then I'm reading my tank level based off um, this reference to an analog input, which it could actually point to any point. Um, so it reads that. Then it checks, am I, you know, am I greater than my high, high set point or slower than my low, low set point? And then if it is, it's going to write to my valve, you know, opening or closing it. And then it's going to write to that instance. And then here I have some debug um, you know, telling me if I'm in error or not. 